It's a beautiful Tuesday, my beautiful people, and we have another 76ers now coming your way. An NBA analyst against the Sixers making a trade, and that NBA analyst happens to be a former Sixer. And going into this game on Tuesday against the Indiana Pacers, it is an in-season tournament game, so wins and points matter. Some injury updates to get to. Before we begin, though, let's have some fun. We're talking about Robert Covington of late. We've thrown it back to the process era Sixers. Name this former process era Sixer, and we'll reveal that answer a little bit later. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Programming reminder, we're back for another watch party tomorrow. Sixers, Celtics for the second time in a week. We'll be going live for a little bit of a pregame show, and then once the game gets underway, the best place to experience Sixers games outside of being at the actual game. So with that, a lot to get to. Let's waste no time and let's start the show. Are the Sixers going to stand pat considering they had the league's best record? This is a team that has a lot of synergy, and the culture under Nick Nurse has been pretty much flawless up to this point. Let's begin there. J.J. Redick, now an ESPN NBA analyst, said that he doesn't want the Sixers to make a trade for a splash player. And, of course, a lot of takeaways to get to with this. And we've been talking about this subject matter here on 76ers now. He said the interesting part about this hypothetical is the difference between out of season versus in season. As it relates to my query, Caruso and OG Ananobi, I think the awkwardness in that offensive hierarchy, it doesn't happen. They are plug and play. They are immediately sort of additive on the defensive end and the offensive end, where I think in season, and we've seen this, I think the in season trade, the in season home run swing for the star player, it does not always work. In fact, it rarely works because it's hard in a six-week, eight-week span as we prepare for the playoffs to figure all of that out to get you primed, locked and loaded, ready to go going into the playoffs. And I think that LeBron James going to the Miami Heat more than a decade ago put pressure on a lot of teams and organizations to try to get their big three. But as we've seen, Big threes don't always work, and what I've loved about this Sixer start to the season as they're on this crazy winning streak, they're playing great offensively, a lot of effort on the defensive end of the floor, analytics back up that they've been one of the best and most successful teams this year is the word team. They are playing team basketball. There aren't too many mouths to feed, and we've seen that when teams try to make that big splash, they struggle in season. Now, when the Sixers traded for Jimmy Butler, as well as Tobias Harris, when Elton Brand was running basketball operations, what happened to Philadelphia? Second round exit. Now, I gave credit to Elton Brand at the time when I was doing some at-home Sixers videos from my shitty apartment in Scranton, Pennsylvania, putting them up on YouTube because the Sixers had to make some moves. They needed to improve the roster, and they were a Kawhi Leonard quadruple bounce away from potentially making it to the Eastern Conference Finals. But there was pressure on Brett Brown at the end of the year to try to find some way to jam all of that into a short time frame, like J.J. Redick said, to make the roster work. And then Philadelphia, with Daryl Morey at the helm, running basketball operations, traded for James Harden in the 2021-2022 season. He got rid of the fraud Ben Simmons, but still, same result. Another second-round exit for a team that has not made it past the second round since 2001. Other teams have tried the big trade. I mean, look, J.J. Redick was talking about bringing in the big fish, the star player, out of season. The Milwaukee Bucks did that with Damian Lillard. He's shooting 37% from the floor, and the Bucks are really struggling. So that trade happened late in the offseason, and you're seeing Milwaukee kind of struggle to get things together at the start of the season. You look back at Kevin Durant to Phoenix, second-round exit. I remember we broke that news when I was getting ready to cover the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl in Arizona against the Kansas City Chiefs, and then Kyrie Irving to Dallas. Everybody thought, Kyrie, Luka, going to be unstoppable on the offensive end of the floor. That's the move that the Mavs needed to kind of right the ship after making it to the Western Conference Finals the year before with Jalen Brunson. They missed the playoffs. So I think the point here is you start a new job, it takes you a little bit while, a little bit to kind of find your comfort zone to a certain degree. You make an in-season trade or a late off-season trade, 
You have the system. You have your teammates. You're trying to develop that on-court relationship a little bit. You're in a new spot. You have to move apartments. There's a lot going on from a human nature and basketball standpoint where these things can be difficult. Let's not forget that the Nets traded three first-round picks and four first-round pick swaps for James Harden in 2020. 2021 before he asked out yet again then went to Philadelphia and asked out yet again and now it's a disaster with the Clippers the result then a second round exit now maybe by the toenail of Kevin Durant right in that series against the Milwaukee Bucks and some injuries happened there with Kyrie James Harden but still a lot of mouths to feed with all those superstars and right now this Sixers team is just gelling right now what have past champions done at the NBA trade deadline. That's a part of this conversation as well. A lot of times, team like the Denver Nuggets, that core was together for a really long time. And right now, what I really like is that Tyrese Maxey is playing at an all-NBA level. Joel Embiid is playing at an all-NBA level. Nick Nurse is maximizing the likes of Tobias Harris. These players have played with one another for a little while. And even though a new coach comes in there, we've seen that they know each other well. And the byproduct, the result of that, has been some pretty solid basketball. More to get to here on the show, including that injury news. But first, 76ers now, sponsored by Prize Picks. $100 deposit match at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. This is Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy, and it's the largest independently run Daily Fantasy Sports app in North America. So many options, of course, with DFS apps, but... I only use prize picks because you win real prizes, and those real prizes, real actual money. Some picks that we like going into some Tuesdays, uh, Tuesday NBA action. Shea Gilgis Alexander, this is the Taco Tuesday special, more than 27 and a half points. That is less than a season average. Bruce Brown, more than two and a half assists. LaMelo Ball, more than 24 and a half points. And Joel Embiid is questionable as we're talking about, but there is some injury insurance that you can get on your prize picks as well. We're going to go more points, rebounds, and assists considering what he did the other night against this same team, that number at 49 and a half. So if you want to tail us, get those picks in makes game day a lot more fun pricepicks.com slash clns code clns for that deal to apply all right most eventual nba champions going back to the previous question that we posed they don't really do anything at the nba trade deadline denver nuggets they acquired thomas bryant who barely played warriors nothing bucks pj tucker Low-level championship, gritty move. Lakers, nothing. Raptors, Marcus Gasol. Warriors, back-to-back -back years in 2017-2018. Continuity, Cavaliers, solid piece there in Channing Frye. Warriors, nothing again. And then the Spurs, pretty much nothing with Austin Day. So I think some of these moves kind of overrated sometimes. You go for the sexy splash. Not every girl is a 10 out of 10. Sometimes you want to settle for the 7 out of 10 and go with the less, less luxurious option because it's less of a handful, right? Same can be said for basketball as I try to make those life comparisons. It's all about filling in the gaps where needed, not upending the team midseason because continuity is important. As for more from J.J. Redick, here you go. What we've seen so far from the Sixers, I'm just like, let's just enjoy this team. They're playing great basketball to me. It's more, how do we add to what we already have instead of taking away and changing the offensive ceiling in theory and getting another star player, whether it's the trade deadline or whether it's the offseason. Philly has a lot of flexibility in terms of what they can go and get. I'm of the mind that a Caruso, OG, and an Obi on this roster makes more sense. That's not a knock on Zach Levine or Pascal Siakam. I want to be very clear on that. And I think that J.J. Redick is very clear. The Sixers do not need another star. Get someone who fits well around Embiid and Maxi. Because right now, you have your two stars in those two players, and sometimes that's all you need, like Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic last year. What say you? Do you want the Sixers to trade for a star? Chip and I are on the same boat. We're going to go P for pass. What say you? Let us know down below in the comment section. Let's round out some quick injury news. Just some hitters to get to here. Joel Embiid questionable tonight against the Indiana Pacers. Left hip soreness for him. And Nicholas Batum is going to be out once again due to personal reasons. This is an in-season tournament game, but it's also the first half of a back-to-back. -back. So points, wins matter. 
But I'd actually say, and this is why the in-season tournament is a joke, the courts are awful, the theory doesn't make sense, I don't watch soccer for a reason, I don't like soccer standings and all that stuff. It's too much to follow, right? What game matters more for the psyche, for your basketball team? It's not the in-season tournament game against the cute Indiana Pacers. You're going after the dog, and you want to chop the head off of the monster in the Boston Celtics on Wednesday. That's what I'm worried about. Joel Embiid, by the way, named Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Stupid, stupid numbers. We posted about this on our community tab. 36.3 points per game, 12.5 rebounds, 5 assists. Only player in the NBA to average all of those and a perfect 4-0 uh, record. If Embiid does not go, Sixers team is deep. Refreshingly deep. Look for Paul Reed to get some big minutes. Mo Bamba potentially to see some run. We've barely seen anything from him. Just heard it a lot during that Penn State-Michigan game. Could see some small ball with Robert Covington as well as K.J. Martin. At the rip, we asked you to name this former Sixer. How many real ones got it right? That is Tony Roten played his college ball at Washington. I actually thought that he was a fun player. Wasn't the most efficient, but he could attack the hell out of the rim, lay the ball up, throw some dunks down. He was quick and had that offensive game. Struggled to shoot that three-pointer. Did play any defense, but a very fun process sixer. To, to, to whoever got that right, good job by you, Tony Roten. Subscribe to the show. Hit that sub button down below. We're on that pursuit of 13,000 subscribers, and we will see you on Wednesday night. Sixer Celtics watch party right here on the show.